Hi, everyone. My name is Damon McCool. I'm the Public Programming Specialist at Eastern State Penitentiary. Today, I'm going to take you on a virtual tour of the Catholic Chaplain's Office murals. The Chaplain's Office murals are a favorite of both historic interpreters and visitors because of the beauty of the space and the stories of redemption and second chances. Over the next few minutes, we'll explore the intersection of art, rehabilitation, faith, and justice. As we move through the history, consider what role you think these elements can play in the transformation of someone's life in prison. Throughout our tour, I'll pose some questions for you to think about. Please feel free to share your thoughts and any questions you have in the chat section as we go along. Let's start at the beginning. Religion was a founding principle of Eastern State Penitentiary and was considered to be a critical element of the rehabilitation of prisoners. In the 1830s, incarcerated people lived in solitary confinement. They labored alone in their cells and received moral and religious instruction. In the 19th century, worship at Eastern State was a private experience. Religious leaders visited prisoners individually and proselytized from the end of cell blocks. Beginning in the 1870s, both the building and the philosophy of the penitentiary changed in ways that dramatically impacted faith and rehabilitation. In the 1870s and 1880s, Warden Michael Cassidy oversaw the construction of new cell blocks and a corridor heading from the front of the building to the central surveillance hub. Nestled between the first block and the newly built ninth block, Cassidy built an office for himself. It's highlighted here in the red box. Here's a photograph of Mr. Cassidy in his newly built office near the turn of the 20th century. About 50 years later, this space would become the Catholic chaplain's office. In the early 20th century, solitary confinement was replaced by congregate living in which prisoners did things together. A chapel was built and people began worshiping together in the penitentiary for the first time. At some point between the 1930s and the mid 1950s, the warden's office became an office for the Catholic chaplain. Our story centers around one chaplain. His name's Edwin Gallagher. He's pictured here. Gallagher would have used this office space to meet with incarcerated people. The chaplain's office was not a place of worship. That's what the chapel was for. This was more of an administrative space for private meetings. From this article, we can learn more about the goals of having a chaplain in the penitentiary. It reads in part, quote, our chaplains also have discussion groups on religion, which contribute to the spiritual and moral guidance of the inmates, end quote. So what do you think? Should prisons employ leaders of faith? What might the benefits be of having a chaplain in a prison? Are there any downsides? Let us know your thoughts in the chat. The story of the chaplain's office murals is really the story of one person's transformation while incarcerated at Eastern State. Lester Smith, pictured here, arrived at Eastern State in March of 1955. Although he became deeply religious, Lester was not always interested in faith. He once said during an interview that he used to mock ministers and priests. But during his incarceration at the Lackawanna County Prison in Scranton, Pennsylvania, Lester experienced what we might call a spiritual awakening. He described being compelled to draw religious imagery on the walls of his cells even though he was neither an artist nor religious before this point. His peers took notice and offered him paint supplies and advice. A priest at that jail also noticed Lester, and it was there that Lester converted to Catholicism before being transferred to Eastern State Penitentiary. Lester even attributed his relatively short sentence of one to five years to his newly discovered faith. By comparison, his accomplice received a three to 10 year sentence. Within two months of Lester's arrival at Eastern State, Father Edwin Gallagher discovered Lester's artistic talent and devotion to his faith and invited Lester to paint a series of Catholic inspired murals in the chaplain's office. Now, many of the murals are of biblical scenes, but some like the one pictured here titled The Penitent Prisoner may have been more of a self-portrait. Some of the murals depict the life of Jesus, 
including this one of the Nativity, and this one of the baptism of Jesus in the River Jordan. There's also a mural of the crucifixion. Lester even painted a portrait of Martin de Porres, a 17th century Peruvian priest who became a saint shortly after Lester was released from Eastern State. Among other things, Martin de Porres is the patron saint of mixed race people and public health workers. During his incarceration, Lester took on the name Paul Martin to honor St. Paul and Martin de Porres. The murals in the chaplain's office are not signed Lester Smith, but instead are signed with the name Paul Martin. All told, Lester painted 23 murals in the chaplain's office. He most likely used oil paint and painted directly on top of the existing wall paint, which would factor heavily in the conservation process nearly half a century later. He did all of this work in a pretty short period of time. He served seven and a half months at Eastern State before being released. After his release, Lester never returned to prison, neither at Eastern State nor anywhere else. And that's pretty remarkable, considering that today, about half of the people who were released from prison in Pennsylvania will recidivate or return to prison. Do you think that Lester's faith and his art had anything to do with him not returning to prison? Let us know in the chat. Now, Lester wasn't the only artist at Eastern State. For example, a former prisoner illustrated this lithograph from the 1850s. What is special about Lester's art is that like the building itself, it was left abandoned when the prison closed in 1971. This is a photograph of the chaplain's office after nearly 25 years of abandonment. Water and damage had compromised the paintings. So in 1994, a decision was made to cover the murals in a tissue-like paper and seal it with a wax resin. If not for this initial step, the paintings may not be there today. The wax resin covered Lester's painting for 19 years before it was carefully removed and the pieces were conserved in 2014. This process was incredibly time consuming and labor intensive. The chaplain's office is now climate controlled to mitigate any further damage and also includes a new roof, skylight, floors, and electric service. The state that the murals are currently in is their final state. They will not be conserved or restored beyond this point. For many years after his release, Lester tried to hide his incarceration from his children. It wasn't until the 1970s when his son found photographs of these murals that Lester revealed this experiment experience to his family. Every year, Eastern State welcomes hundreds of thousands of visitors into the chaplain's office to view Lester's work. Sometimes I wonder if Lester would be proud or embarrassed that we showcase his paintings. One of the great mysteries of Eastern State Penitentiary involves this painting. It's called the Communion of Saints. Today, it appears to be a modern indoor church with about half a dozen people in robes at the bottom of the painting. But the original mural painted by Lester is an outdoor scene and the bottom of the painting is a fiery purgatory. That tells us that someone edited Lester's painting between the time that Lester left in 1955 and the time the penitentiary closed in 1971. But that person remains unknown. Here's the original and the altered versions. Can you spot the differences? Why do you think someone would change this painting? Let us know in the comments. Some of the murals are in better condition than others. And although folks visit the space to view Lester's work, they're also, they're also compelled to consider the relationship between art and personal transformation. Sometimes Eastern State tour guides use this space to share their lived experience with art and incarceration. Here's former Eastern State tour guide Russell Craig showing some of his portraits to a group of visitors. Today, Russell, or Craig as his friends call him, is a celebrated artist in the mural arts program here in Philadelphia. Mural arts is the nation's largest public art program. 
and it's dedicated to the belief that art ignites change. Mural Arts works with people who are currently and formerly incarcerated to provide art training and work on new murals. The program aims to reduce recidivism and reclaim public spaces. Here's a piece Craig worked on called Portraits of Justice. It's on a municipal building here in Philly. The portrait above the front door is former Eastern State tour guide and musician, Mary Baxter. So as our tour winds down, I'd like you to consider what role you think second chances should play in our justice system. It seems like art and faith provided Lester a second chance during his time at Eastern State. Do you think art and or faith can be helpful for people in prison? Why or why not? Okay, let's take a look at the questions and I'll do my best to answer them. All right, it doesn't look like there's any questions at the moment, but if you have any, you can stay connected to Eastern State through Facebook, uh, Twitter, and Instagram. Let us know if you have any questions about the chaplain's office and stay tuned next week for another behind the scenes tour of the penitentiary. Thanks for joining me. Bye. <laughs>